Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. As you may know, last month, Church Militant released a spotlight investigation blowing the lid off decades of sexual abuse and cover-up in the breakaway Catholic group, the Society of St. Pius X, also known as the SSPX. The SSPX claimed the liturgical high ground in the 1970s following the madness unleashed on the church in the wake of Vatican II. The group's founder, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, was eventually excommunicated for consecrating four bishops, directly contravening orders from Pope John Paul II to stand down and not do it. He did it anyway, and that initial seedbed of disobedience has now come back in spades on the society. A cult-like aura developed around the society, a word for the record repeated to us over and over by multiple former followers and priests of the society. In that cultish community, a climate developed where priests were treated as direct messengers of the Most High, who could never be questioned, much less challenged. To challenge them was to see yourself shown the door, publicly humiliated, even having your name called out from the pulpit, a practice that still continues to today. What keeps the society and its adherents glued together is the devotion to the traditional Latin Mass, first and foremost. Beyond that, there are many within the society who believe there is no salvation outside the society, the SSPX, that Rome is apostate, the Novus Ordo Mass is invalid, and even further, that it is actually evil. That term applied by none other than SSPX Bishop Bernard Follet, a man whose actions in hiding and moving around abusive priests within the society gives him a special familiarity with evil. While most of them are prudential in not speaking about all that in the open, it is nonetheless a creedal point for many in the society and its supporters. They see, not without justification, mind you, the liturgical and doctrinal insanity in the church right now, which both preceded Francis and has grown exponentially on his watch. Again, Absolutely correct diagnosis. Church Milton has been reporting on that for years now and taking it on the chops from many in the authentic hierarchy who go out of their way to disparage us and even me personally. Undeterred, however, we remain in the church and press on. So on the matter of diagnosing the disease of modernism in the church, SSPX followers and Church Milton have shared much in common over the years so much so that a sizable number of them followed us. But where we must part company is not the diagnosis, but the remedy. Disobedience is never a proper course of action, never. And like the Church of Nice crowd, who also were disobedient just in other areas, one wrong first step sets your feet on the path to multiple evils. Hence, the cover-up. An ongoing to this day cover up, by the way, of multiple clergy right up to the present day of heinous sex abuse of minors, of breaking up families, impregnating impregnating women, uh, paying hush money. How is any of this different from the scandal that rocked the church in 2002 when the Boston Globe reported its spotlight series on the same type of thing? The only substantive difference is that more of the Church of Nice victims were teenage males. It seems a bit more evenly split in the SSBX abuse cases between homosexual and heterosexual abuse. And speaking of differences, perhaps the one main reason this kind of evil is allowed to persist is because of the silence of those who know about it. And here we are speaking on the secondary level, the media types who know of it but will not speak of it. In the Boston Globe scandal, it came out that not only did all sorts of chancery personnel and bishops know of the filth, but so too did a surprising number of Catholic media. And when the news of the homo predator Cardinal McCarrick broke in 2018, news came tumbling out of the closet that loads of Catholic media, who mistakenly think of themselves as journalists and portray themselves that way, also knew of it or had heard this and that but could not go near the story for fear of upsetting their precious self-centered relationships with the bishops. So boys and seminarians continued to get raped while they wrote meaningless tomes and flooded Catholic media sites with opinion pieces, waxing eloquently and most importantly hypocritically on one subject after another, 
racking up speaking fees and book deals and conference appearances. See, in the Catholic world, if you tick off either your base or those who grant you access, your goose is cooked. Say the whole truth and the wrath of the establishment, whatever establishment it is, falls on your head. Which brings us to the so-called traditional Catholic websites, publications, and personalities. You know, the ones who are always chest-thumping to unite the clans. A load of self-serving, self-promoting garbage if there ever was one. Our spotlight investigation has been out for almost a full month now, and not a peep from any other Catholic media types aside from Tim and David Gordon, and as well as Patrick Coffin and John Zamirak, just a handful with any remaining integrity. And yes, we say integrity because for the so-called trads, more in love with traditional Latin mass than the actual truth, they have completely ignored this story, which by the way, has now broken into secular media. They always do. The Kansas City Star this past weekend ran a lengthy expose on its front page, spelling out the entire case in St. Mary's. And if it were possible, their investigation, as far as St. Mary's goes, was even more comprehensive than ours, although we did get a mention, thank you. So why is it that when the Church of Nice scandals broke, these trads couldn't keep their collective mouths shut, using the opportunity to extend their argument to pillory Rome, denounce the Novus Ordo masses from the devil, allowing hundreds of supporters to flood their com boxes, calling Pope Francis the Antichrist. And that was on a good day. Yep, sexual assault in the Church of Nice and the trads start popping champagne corks, feeling even more superior to all other Catholics, if that's even possible. But the exact same pattern is proved to be the case in the SSPX, and stone-cold silence, aside from the filthy comments directed at Church Militant for breaking the story. The so-called <clears throat> traditional Catholics spewed forth a degree of venom at us using GD and even publicly calling Christine Niles the C-word on Twitter. Yeah, you heard that right. And by that, we mean actually spelling out the C-word, not just saying, quote, C dite hyphen word. They spelled it out in public. We've taken incoming rounds for quite a while now, and hands down, we have never received anything like the torrent of filth which came from this crowd of supposedly traditional Catholics. We have no idea what tradition they're adhering to, but it certainly is not Catholic. It is disgraceful that this crowd of traditional media types have said not a word about this sex abuse and the cover-up. And given the vast knowledge of it, including that Archbishop Fillet, who led the society for many years, and his direct, hands-on, direct, hands-on role in unleashing some of these predator priests, it is an appalling lack of integrity by supposed journalists to fall silent just so they cannot have any stain on their narrative that all we need back is the traditional Latin mass and all will be fine. Wrong. That single-minded, naive approach has always been wrong. It's never been right. The church fell apart in the 60s when the Latin mass was the only game in town. Reverent liturgy, and yes, the Latin mass, is only one piece of the puzzle in restoring the church. Unfortunately, the cult-like world and mindset that develops around this does little else other than to fuel the heterodox and dissidents' rantings about how traditional Catholics are a relic from the past and need to be ignored. The circle the wagons and damn the torpedoes approach of the trad community is damning itself, as is evidenced by the severe lack of integrity and their willful unwillingness to engage with the truth. They, rightfully, tore McCarrick and the whole cover-up of his evil by the likes of Supich and World, they tore it to pieces, just like we did. But they refused to utter a word against the exact same behavior in their own house. It is disingenuous, hypocritical, and beyond off-putting. This crowd has within its ranks some of the loudest mouths of re about restoring authentic manhood in Catholic circles. Unfortunately, the manhood they present is more like a masters of the universe superiority manhood, where they rule and everyone else gets to grovel before them and their wisdom. They comically go on somehow equating scotch and cigars being related to masculinity, as well as the need to unite the clans but they fail to tell you exactly what the clans would be uniting around. Hint, it won't be anything truthful as long as that truth upsets their apple cart. 
They are no different than the Church of Nice establishment they rightfully lambasted for enabling abuse for decades. In fact, in one way, they're actually worse. The Church of Nice crowd never presented itself as superior Catholics, Catholic elites, in many ways. Maybe they'd heard of this filth within the SSPX before, maybe not, but they have now. And until they step up and start reporting on it, they should be dismissed out of hand because they are lying by their silence. Our Lord called out hypocrites, and that is Catholic tradition. Hey, self-appointed public trad leaders, question for you. What if it was your child? God love you. I'm Michael Voris.